And um, tonight I mentioned this morning what I was going to preach about, but I didn't give you the title. So Romans chapter number four this evening. If you got your Bibles, please, just for a very short few minutes tonight, and we'll get in the Word of God here a little bit, and I'll give you this thought. Uh, that I believe will be a help to you. Romans chapter number four, and begin reading with verse number 16. Romans chapter four and verse number 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, also, which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Now he's talking about Abraham was the literal physical father of the Jews, but the spiritual father of us. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Verse 18, who against hope, believed in hope, this is Abraham, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Them three little words there in verse 21, he was able. What God promised, he was able to perform. I want to preach tonight on the subject, the battle cry of the church. And the battle cry of the church tonight is, he's able. The battle cry of the church in this world of opposition, in this world of skepticism, in this world of atheism, agnostics, political correctness, religious uh, inclusiveness is what the, the term they, everybody wants to use, tolerance, acceptance, left-wing liberal doubt and, and, and political issues. The cry of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is God is able. And I'm glad we can herald that cry forth to a lost and dying world. Ladies and gentlemen, the world tonight is groping for an answer, looking for some kind of truth, looking to science, trying to discover something. And to be honest about it, the world, even movies, start, they're, they're no longer very optimistic. They're saying the world's, we've tried and we've tried and we've tried and we've tried and the world's worst it's ever been. War looms on the horizon. That little little piggy boy over there in Korea, whatever he is, Kim Jong, I, that, I mean, he's liable to pull the switch any minute and the world is saying, what in the world are we gonna do? Uh, they, they, they say uh, disease and famine. People all over the world have no hope. Aren't you glad tonight that the church can stand up with a great big banner that says, our God is able. Our God is able, people. Our God is able, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there was a famous uh, free thinker one time named Collins back in the 1700s in England. And uh, 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 he, he said uh, he, he's always torturing Chris, Christians and making fun of Christians. And he talked to this Christian man one time and he said, uh, just how great is your God? You talk about your God all the time. How great is your God? And that simple, uneducated Officially, Christian man turned to him and he said, my God's so great that the heavens can't contain him and yet he's so small, he lives in my heart. And he said that great free thinker, that hit him. And he, th he got to thinking about that. And he said it completely changed the way that he thought because of the cry of that one simple Christian man. I'm glad tonight, po folks, we've got the truth. We've got the truth that this world is starving for tonight. 
Don't be ashamed of them signs I've been holding up. Don't be ashamed to put a bumper sticker on your car. Don't be ashamed to wear a shirt with a Bible verse on. Don't be ashamed. Listen, that's what the world needs. They're starving for the truth of God's Word. I want to say just three things right quickly here this evening, and we'll go. Number one, God is able to keep His promises. God is able to keep his promises. The Bible said in Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, God who cannot lie. He cannot lie. I'm telling you something. They say, well, I'll tell you something God can't do. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. If God said it, it may look bad for a while, but it'll come on through. He's able to keep his promises uh, that he made the Jew back in the Old Testament. He promised the Jews the children of Jacob. Now, you remember them promises and that land and the promises of God go to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That, that word Jacob is the same as Israel. And the promises are on Jacob and his seed. Not Ishmael uh, come from that. That's what there's a lot of people that get all out confused. And they say, well, Ishmael's uh, son of Abraham, so he owns the land of Palestine. No, no. No, no. God gave that land over there uh, to the descendants of Jacob. And those are the true Jewish uh, descendants, Jew come from Judah, from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and right on down. And ladies and gentlemen, they're, they're fussing about it on the news. They're talking about it every day. They're saying we're going to start war because they're wanting to move the U.S. Embassy back to Jerusalem and give it to the Jews. And I'm telling you, that's the right move. That's the scriptural move. It doesn't matter about Democrats or Republicans. I couldn't care less what them people think. What I care about is what that book said and that Bible said God gave that land to Israel. And buddy, they ain't enough devils. They ain't enough countries over there to stop it from happening. The Lord's going to take he said, I'll defend Jerusalem as birds fly. Back there in the Old Testament, and I'm telling you tonight, God is able to keep his promise to the Jew. He sure did and has and will. One man put out a stupid videos, and they, they fuss about stuff like this all the time, them internet preachers, because they ain't been around the right kind of preaching. And I feel sorry for him, really. Uh, he, put on a, and he said, well, uh, how, can you, how can you get a true blooded, full-blooded Jews now. It's impossible. They're all mixed in with all the people in the world, and it's impossible to get 144,000 of all of them. No, 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 no. It is not impossible. The Lord can raise them up if he wants to. That's what he did when Jesus here the first time. He rose up some that have been dead and let them walk on this earth. He can do that again if he wants to. Those 144,000 are not Jehovah's Witnesses. One man said, Jehovah's Witness told him, he said, well, we're the 144,000. He said, well, the Bible said them 144,000 are all Jews. You a Jew? You know which tribe you come from? It said they're all males and they're all virgins. That gets rid of about 99% of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Right? I'm telling you tonight, you say, well, you believe that literal? Yes, sir, absolutely. I have no reason not to believe God meant what he said. I have no reason not to believe God will come Come through on his promise to Israel. He'll keep it. He said, I'll bless them that bless you. I'll curse them that curse you. And America, we still better take up for that little country over there because God's able to fulfill his promises to them. Romans chapter 11 verse 1 said, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. You better not fool with them. He'll, the Lord will bless you if you'll do that. Number two, his promises to the Gentile. He's able to keep his promise to the Gentile. He said he'll fulfill all the prophecy. Now they say, uh, oh, Yellowstone, oh, faithful up there in Yellowstone Park. Anybody on there? Anybody ever been to Yellowstone Park and saw the, the geyser? Oh, faithful. They say that ever, ever, uh, I think 35 minutes or so to an, at 90 or something like that. I've got how far it is. That thing, buddy, you can stand around there and watch it. And if somebody works in that little building there, they said about 9 o'clock you can look for it. And sure enough, right about 9 o'clock, kaboom, man, about 130 feet in the air, there goes that water squirting up. Been doing that for hundreds and hundreds of years. And they call it 
old faithful. And they say, because you can count on it. You can count on it. Middle of the night, 20 times a day, old faithful just squirts right up in the air. And buddy, they can count on it. You, here, right here's old faithful, y'all. This is old faithful right here. I'm telling you, when that thing's dried up, this one will still be right on target. He's able to keep his promise to the Gentile. And then he's able to keep his promise to the church. I'm glad the Lord made promises to the church tonight. I'm glad the, 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 the devil may uh, howl and the winds may blow and the rocks may beat against the church of Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you tonight, God is able to keep his promises to the church. I'm glad one day, the, the, uh, like he did the Red Sea, like he did the River of Jordan, he parted, he made a way. He's able to keep his promise to the church. Said this man one time, uh, he, a sailor, and he's out on this ship, and it was in a big old storm, and that storm throwed him up against this rock, and he got on this big old rock, they said that night, and the wind was bl- blowing, and tree limbs was falling, and he's hanging on for dear life like that. And he said the next day, they come and rescued him, and they said, was you scared? He said, you better believe I was scared. And he said, what, was you worried? He said, I sure was. And he said, did you, did you get worried? He said, I sure did. And they said, did you shake? He said, I sure did, but the rock didn't. He said, I did, but the rock didn't. I tell you, glory to God, people. Listen, the devil, we might shake once in a while. Every once in a while, we might die a little bit. Every once in a while, we might get down in the dust. But thank God the rock don't. That old rock's still there. The blessed rock of ages is still as real tonight. Thank God, Brother Joe, it's still as real tonight as it ever has been. When the first one was saved, when the last will be saved God's able to keep his promises to the church people don't give up on God's promises glory to God hallelujah amen he said one time this preacher was sitting by the fireside and uh, he said uh, he sent his little boy sitting by the fireside reading he said son would you go up there and get me that big old book upstairs and bring it daddy wants it he had a great big old book like a big dictionary encyclopedia or something little bitty boy went up them steps and he went up there and he heard him grunting and hurting and grunting and that little boy couldn't even get that book. He had it like that trying to grab it. He said, Daddy, I can't do this. It's too heavy. And Daddy reached down, got him and the book and all and just carried it on down like that. That's the way the Lord does us in the church. Sometimes your burden gets too heavy. Sometimes I, sometimes, listen, I've been there lots of times when I didn't know if I could go on. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to where you just didn't know if he was going to make it and all of a sudden something, somebody picks you up and carries you and brings you through and you look back and say, how in the world did I get through that? Hallelujah, His promises. Woo! Thank God His promises are still true to the church. Oh, Martin Luther one time, they said he had his Bible out there one time, and they said, you think anything in that Bible will ever fail? He said, I would expect stars to fall out of the sky before one verse of that book failed. He said, I'd really think, and the stars are going to fall one day. We'll talk about that another time. One man said, well, how's them big stars? They're bigger than the sun. How? Not all of them. They some little ones. And brother, there's some other stuff into that too. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something this evening. Uh, the, the promises of God are good to the church. Number two, I want to say God's able to keep his promises. Number two, God's able to provide for his children. Amen. Oh, Adoniram and Judson went to Mission Field and went six years without a convert. Nobody got saved for six years. And somebody asked him, they said one time, they said, well, do you think God's really with you? He said, I'm just as sure of it as, if I, as anything I've ever, six years. And by the time he got done, there's a hundred churches there and thousands of converts because God's able. God's able to provide for us physically. Where God guides, he provides. God still does. Take care of us. Old John the Apostle, they were over here and they tried to kill him and he wouldn't, they couldn't kill him. They, they, tradition says that they put him in oil to try to boil him and he wouldn't boil. And they got him out there and they said, well, if we can't kill you, we'll just put you over on the Isle of Patmos. And they put him on the Isle of Patmos and the sky opened up. They wrote the book of Revelation that we've got laying in our 
lapse tonight. The greatest old of the last book in the Bible on on what the end times, the book of Revelation. John wrote it on the Isle of Patmos. You know what that means? That means God took care of John physically. And that means if you do the will of God and live right, you you can't even die till he gets ready for you to. Nothing can't take you out until he gets ready for you. You're invincible in the will of God until God gets it. Now, I understand we're in bodies of sin. I know we got sin in our nature. I know something's going to get us no matter how no matter how good you eat, no matter how much you exercise, something's going to get I understand that, and it is, and that is true. But I'm telling you, God still takes care of us physically. He's able. I mean, you, I know people don't believe we believe this, but God still heals people. He does heal. He's healed me before. There is a God that heals. He is the Lord our God that healeth it. I know there's a bunch of fake nuts out there that makes people think all healing's fake, but it's not. God, when it comes right down to it, all healings of God. Nothing can't get better unless He does it. You can take medicine, but He's the one that makes you better. Lord, I see our brother Derek there sitting right there tonight is a testimony of beating cancer, battled that cancer for how many years, brother Derek? Two and a half years, and I remember I, just when I'd first met them, uh, when he's pastoring that little church, well, we under boom boondocks. And buddy, I'm telling you, we had a time over there and the Lord the Lord healed him. Cancer free now for 25 years, or how long it's been. And I'm telling you, uh, I wish you'd have done something for his brain. Uh, but no, I'm just kidding. But the Lord healed it. I know other people. Brother Wayne, who's, he's in Florida tonight loafing around down there. Brother Wayne battled that cancer. And God touched Brother Wayne. And you say, well, Brother Danny, I've got something. To listen, God still heals. He's a, he's a healing God. He's able to heal. He can heal. He does heal. He will heal. I know there's crazy people out there that think, uh, you know, they try to heal everybody and they wear glasses. I ain't talking about crazy people like that. I'm talking about the real God in answer to real prayer and real faith does heal. Amen. He's able to take care of you physically. He can cure disease. He can cure whatever you need. He's able to take care of you financially. He's able to take care of you financially. Have I told y'all lately he knows how much your bills are? He knows how much your house payment is. He knows. My preacher told us, he said, God will put the angels on high rations before he'll starve one of his youngins to death. Now, I know sometimes God picks out certain Christians to go through stuff, hardships and starvation and torture and prison. I understand that. But as, as, for, for the normal, for the norm, listen, brother, God, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In the Old Testament, he provided manna. It fell every day. The disciples couldn't pay their taxes one time. And the Lord said, go down there. And, and get pull a fish up and he got that money. You know how he got it? By obeying the Lord. If you obey the Lord, he'll take care of you. You put God first and honor him. You may not be rich. You may not have all this world's got to offer, but thank God he'll take care of you and he'll supply your needs. He'll give you. Listen, I couldn't tell you the times. I could not tell y'all the times when I have when I have just been blessed beyond measure. People ask me how in the world, I have it all the time, I go somewhere and preach and they said you know what people come up and say I love to hear you tell about them girls and uh, listen I've got a bunch of stories I ain't never told y'all Lord have mercy we had oh good night it was, it was crazy uh, when they were all they said I love to hear you tell about how God took care of and he did he did Lord we've been in the car before and somebody standing right behind the car uh, trying to cuss us out you know crazy. and I just said don't look girls don't look just open the door get out of the car and, and walk into church uh, that is crazy woman up there one time and she was be waiting on me when I pulled in and uh, she said some awful stuff I, I'll tell you about it one of these days and she'd been over there and sometimes I look back and I think good Lord how in the world we come home one night it was real late at night and stuff like that was going on and uh, the, it was dark and we pulled up in my yard and the back door was wide open and, and Carrie said daddy Somebody's in the house. I bet it's and name this person. I said, now, Carrie, don't talk like that. She's about, I guess she was maybe 13, 14. And I said, no, she ain't in here. She said, yes, she is. And, and there was a McDonald's bag laying out in the yard. 
She said, yep, she went to McDonald's and eat up there, and she's waiting on her. She's going to kill us. And it was a big person. And uh, I said, oh, Karen, that's crazy. And you know how it is when it's dark and somebody said, I thought, Lord, what if she is? The devil's done God in there and she's going to kill us as soon as we walk in the door. And so I put Chris and Corey that about that high. I put on, I said, y'all stay right there. And me, I, I got, she, Carrie had to hold my arm like this right here and was walking in the house. I went and got a butcher knife about that long. I know it sounds stupid now, and now I laugh about it, but I'm, it was scary. Have you ever got scared at not in the dark night? The more you start believing it, the scarier it seems. She said, Daddy, she's in here. I said, no, she's not. I thought, Lord, what if she is? So we got this butcher knife, and I said, boop, she ain't in here. So what's she doing in the bed? She, said, she couldn't get under that bed. <laughs> she, said, she, said, she said, she said, what's she in the bathroom? I, I, I had this butcher knife. She's holding on to my arm. We went in every room in the house. I was ready to protect my family. All right? You know, I look back at stuff like that now, and we laugh about it. Uh, but I'm telling you, there have been times. There have been times. I mean, I have no money. I couldn't pay the bills. And I was ashamed to tell anybody I couldn't pay my bills uh, because here I was supposed to be a preacher, and I was embarrassed, and I was not going to ask for help. And uh, uh, I loaded up everything I could find that I didn't need, and I put them on a trailer took them to Asheville where I wouldn't be recognized uh, to the flea market and, and sold some stuff uh, to try to pay the bill. I mean, the Lord never said it'd always be easy, but I'll tell you one thing, it always got paid. It always got paid. One time I, was, uh, I went to the, I told this story before, been a long time, I, I was uh, going to the post office, I mean, the, my mailbox, and I got this uh, letter out of the mail, and uh, I, it was from my insurance company. And I remember I laid it down on the washing machine and I thought, stupid, I hate letters. I hate any letters that look like bills. And I saw his insurance company, I, I come back close to just throwing it in the trash can. And for some reason, I opened it because I thought, my insurance ain't due already, surely. Is it time already? I guess I would have just paid that. And I opened it up and somehow or another something had happened they'd make, give a, and they gave me a refund or something. It's $106. $106. I said, Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God! And it was when we was, we was raising money to put the down payment on this building land over there in the old building. And I had 106 I said, Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And I'm telling you, I had been fussing at church. Some of y'all might remember that. I'd been telling everybody, give extra money. Everybody give them extra. If you have some extra money, let's all give it to put on the new church. And I'm telling you, as soon as I looked at that check, something says, now, you've been telling everybody to give money to the church. Now, you just give that to the church Sunday. And my son, I went, ah, why did I have to think that? Have you ever had that feeling? Right? You know, the Lord, you feel like the Lord tells you to do something, and you, and you don't want to do it. But it's too late then, you done think. Here, big mouth done got up there and fussed at everybody and said, give, give, give. And I said, man, that's $106. I mean, if it was like 20 or something. I could, and the Lord said, now, if you throwed it away, you'd have never even, you'd never even know you had it, right? Oh, that's right. That's, and I, I couldn't have no peace. And finally, I just said, all right. I'll, and I folded it up and put it in my wallet where my ties go and stuck it down in there, and I put it in, uh, in my wallet, and I, and I forgot about it. Sunday morning come, and I do just like I did this morning. I, I open up, get my, my ties out of that little corner pocket of my wallet and I put it in the offering plate with my regular ties and offering and I forgot all about it two weeks later I was preaching at a church in Spartanburg South Carolina down there right Chesney right across the South Carolina line down there on uh, 221 uh, down there in South Carolina and I preached a little crowd wasn't much there wasn't as many people as there was in this one section here tonight just a handful of people and I preached that night a little youth service and the preacher got up and he said now folks he said, uh, we need to take up a love offering for Brother Danny. He said, uh, uh, he, said uh, uh, he drove a long way, gas is high, give him that normal speech, you know, preachers do. And they took up a little offering that night. And he, when it was over, he, he, handed, he said, here, preacher, we got to give you something that's ain't much. And I just stuck it in my pocket and never thought a thing about it. When I got up the road, got home or somewhere, I thought, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And I pulled it out, and I started counting it. And guess what? There was a check in there from that church to me for 
and six dollars. I kid you not. I'm not lying. I mean, it hadn't been two weeks. You think I'm lying. I'm telling the truth. A hundred and six dollars. And some ones rolled up. And I looked at it and the Lord said, now there's your hundred and six dollars back. I said, woo! Hallelujah! And give me about 30 bucks to boot. On top of that, stop and get something to eat with. And I'm telling you, I learned that day. I knew it. I mean, you know it and you know it, but you still don't want to believe it a lot. You can't outgive God, people. You can't do it. He'll bless you. He, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. He gave him $106 back. And look, now there's some of you sitting there saying, oh, I, can't, I can't afford it. I can't. That's why nothing like that don't ever happen to you. You're a tightwad. Sometimes just haul off and give more than you're required to and watch and see what happens. There's a lady sitting in here tonight. I don't want to embarrass her. She gets a little check once a month. Her check is $56 a month. Is that right? And there's a, you got it too. You're going to take me to cook out. Okay, man. She's been promised me she's going to take me to cookout. Amen. <laughs> Haul you around everywhere. I need to go to cookout. I'm just kidding. But anyway, uh, $56 a month. And this morning she said, now my ties are $6, right, Brother Danny? I said, that's the kind of attitude God blesses. And some of you make $56 in half a day. She makes $56 a month. Pays her tithe. You say, but I make a lot of money. Well, let's pray God will put you back down to 56 a month. Maybe you can be honest then and pay yours like you're supposed to. I'm telling you, he's able to take care of you financially. And she didn't round it off $5.60 like y'all do. It kills me, man. You know, <laughs> make... $610, my tie is 61. Lordy mercy, man. Give an offering. 62. He's able to take care of you financially. He's able to take care of it, fulfill his promise spiritually. Our battles, our thoughts. Is God able to help you spiritually? Is he able to provide for you spiritually? Are you having a battle with your thoughts? I have people tell me, they said, brother, like that girl I was telling you about a while ago, uh, with a crush on her school teacher. Listen, is God able to help you with that? Is God able to help you? You say, Brother Danny, I have thoughts in my head, and I know they're wrong, and I can't get them out. I can't get them out. I fight it. I fight it. Now, you do your part. You do your part. Cut that stupid TV off. Don't watch nothing dirty on your phone. Don't look at no, don't listen to dirty music. Don't watch dirty music. And you've played God the blood of Jesus over your thoughts. I'm telling you, He's able. He's able, he's able. Uh, man, one man's got on there and he said, uh, well, it's just not fair. He said, I have these homosexual thoughts and I've thought them all. Would God want me to just not be who I really am? And another guy said, well, hey, I've liked pretty women all my life. What am I going to do? Same thing, amen. Is he supposed to act on all them thoughts? Lord, no. We're all sinners. We're all sinners, amen. Like that guy said, he said, I'm a lesbian trapped in a man's body. I like women, amen. I mean, that's, I'm telling you, buddy, we're all got messed up in it. Some of y'all a little slow, but you're getting it. I'm telling you, we all got sin in it. We all got sinful desires. We're all corrupt. We're all dirty inside. But he's able, he's able. I'm telling you, he's able to clean your heart and your mind through the word of God and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, and I'm through. God is able to save the worst. Hebrews 7, verse 26, He's able to save to the uttermost all that come unto God by Him. If you, My pastor said, if you can confess it, God can forgive it. Never forget him saying that. He said that all the time. If you can confess it, God can forgive it. Can you confess it? God can forgive it. He's able to for, uh, save you from the penalty of sin. Like in a courtroom. 
My old Jonathan Edwards, the famous preacher, the great preacher, Jonathan Edwards, uh, in 1 Timothy 1, 17, he read one time where it says, uh, now under, under the king, immortal, uh, uh, invisible, great king, all, eternal God. And he said that verse got a hold of him and he awakened, it quickened in his heart and he got saved on the spot, just like that. He got saved from the penalty of sin. Like you're in a courtroom and you go in and the judge says, not guilty, out of here. Case dismissed. God's able to save from the penalty of sin. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how much sin you've committed. He's able to forgive you and cleanse you from the penalty of sin of sin. You know what? Uh, I, I understand this is Old Testament. They are about that east and the west and buried in the depths of the sea. I know in New Testament our sins are not in the depths of the sea. They're gone. They don't even exist. They're not gone to the east and the west. They're, they don't exist nowhere. But in Old Testament typology, I mean, you can preach that spiritually. He said God cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And a man said one time, they said, he said, well how far is that? He said, I don't know. You tell me how far is uh, uh, east from the west you start measuring now if you started measuring right now and going north to south you'd go north, 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 north and there'd come a point where you'd start going south right? and that's how far it'd be from the north to the south but if you start right here and said I'm going east to west you don't never get west you go east forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Ain't you glad he didn't say, Lord, put them as far as the north and the south? You can't beat that book right there, buddy. It got up a long time before you did. That thing was here before me and you was ever thought about. The greatest mind in the world tried to dissect that book. They, you ain't going to get up on God like that. He said as far as the east is from the west, they're gone, brother. No way to measure it. I'm glad to say tonight, Whatever you've done, it's gone. It's under the blood. They're underneath the blood of the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgiveness, that's good enough for me. Praise God, my sins are gone. Shout on that. Not only that, he's able to save you from the power of sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know what I've seen people do? I've had people tell me. They said, well, Brother Danny, so-and-so's on drugs. I have seen people come and really get right with God and quit doing drugs like that. I mean, stop, brother. Oh, we've got them here in the church like that. You say, well, I've got this one sin I have a heart. Listen, he's able to save you from the power of sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? See, if we're dead to sin, there ain't no sin supposed to have power over us. I'm not preaching sinless perfection. You know me better than that. But I'm just saying we don't have to live with sin bossing our lives around under the power of a sin. We don't have to be an alcoholic. We don't have to be a... I, you say, well, I just can't help it. I'm weak. I'm telling you, God is able to deliver you from the power of that sin. Tell you what I've seen. As a man come out of church one night, we stand in the parking lot, me and some men sitting around here, and the Lord is just all over the place. And that man come out, and he pulled out a pack of cigarettes, and he said, them things right there, he said, them's a weight on me. He said, I can't feel like the victory like I He said, I want to quit. And one of them men said, well, let's do it right now. He said, okay. And we got down there, there was about five of us, and we prayed, and heaven came down. And the power of God fell on us that place. And oh, we got up and we was a shouting hell. And he jumped up like that and threw him across the road. And I saw him about a year later. And I said, uh, how you doing? I? He said, you know what? He said, God took the desire from that away. He said, I never wanted another one from that moment till this. I'm telling you, the Lord, now it don't always happen like that. Some people have a fight with, some people have a fight with other things. I'm not just talking about cigarettes. I am not about anything, gossip, pride. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't have to live under, you, there's nothing should boss you around and control you as a child of God. He's able to give you power of sin. And then lastly, not only is he able to keep you from the penalty of sin, the power of sin, but one day from the very presence of sin. We're going to a city. We're going to a city, y'all. 
I preached about it this morning. Will there be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more pain? One day, our battle with sin will be done. And you know what we'll say? He's able. He's able. He brought me through many dangerous toils and snares. He saved me from the penalty of sin. He helped me with the, from the power of sin. And glory to God, he done put me in a place where there ain't no sin. From the very presence. I'm glad he's able. And I, let's stand by our head for prayer. Miss Desi's coming, every head bowed, every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. I don't know what you might be struggling with tonight. It'd be a good time. It would be a good time while she plays softly. No singing or nothing. Slip right out of your seat. Come on. Come on, young man. Come on, mom, dad, others, others, others. Just slide in around this altar. Say, Lord, I know that you're able. You're able. You say, well, I sort of don't want God to deliver me, preacher. Well, suit yourself. Life's too short to live defeated. Life's too short to live carnal. Life's too short to live with no victory, no power. Why don't you come? Come on. Come on right now. Let's fill this altar up tonight. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. How about that temper? How about that jealousy? How about that self-righteous spirit? How about that no burden for sinners? Let's come get it on the altar tonight. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. She's playing softly. He's able tonight. Why should we tarry? Amen. When Jesus is calling. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray now. Anybody else? Anybody else need to come? Come on right now. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would help us take this simple truth. He's able. The battle cry of the church. I pray you bless every marriage. I pray you bless every individual. Lord, those that are struggling. Lord, those that are battling evil thoughts. Lord, I pray that you'd help them, give them victory. Lord, those that are fighting a battle at work where they have to go to work and there's people talk filthy and they're listening to bad music all day. And Lord, sometimes they just seem like, what's the use? How can I make... God, give them victory tonight. God, give them the power of the Holy Ghost on them tonight. May the power of the Holy Ghost fall upon them, Lord, and help them to live right and serve you and do the right thing. Help them, Lord Jesus, we pray. Help them, Lord Jesus, we pray. Do what ought to be done in every life. Have your way in our lives, Lord, tonight. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to live for you this week, Lord. Do the right thing. In Jesus' name. Some still praying tonight. Some still praying.